学，大家好，我是梁彩玲，欢迎大家收看我们《英文检定二》第十六讲的节目。今天的主题叫 Alexander Fleming， 同学们可能不知道这个是谁，等一下看完我们今天的节目，你就会知道。OK， 同学们对于二次大战时候英国名相丘吉尔的故事应该很熟悉。那这一课要讲的是他幼年成长的故事，跟医学名人。富来明发生了交集，这个故事的启发告诉我们，不求回报的付出，都会在后来的时空里带来意想不到的收获哦。首先，我们看课程重点。好，我们这这这课里面，我们会学到表达生活环境的用法，还有医学名词。好，接下来看 Be English。B English, he missed the bull's eye. A, 他搞不清楚重点。B, 他很想念牛的眼睛。看完了 B English， 我们要来做练习。在做练习之前，先听 Dr. Culture 的 introduction. Hi, I'm Dr. Culture. This is definitely an amazing story, and one I have to admit I've never heard of before, possibly because it takes place in Scotland. In this story, Winston Churchill is saved by Alexander Fleming's father. As a gesture of thanks, Churchill's father gives Fleming a good education, and he eventually goes on to discover penicillin. There are some similarities between this and other success stories I've heard of originating in the U.S. Sometimes, a simple act of kindness or selflessness in the middle of a chance event can create a true hero. President John F. Kennedy, for example, wasn't very well known in his early years before becoming president, until a book and a film were released based on his life in the Navy. Due to an accident with a Japanese destroyer, his boat was sunk. As a result, the entire crew was forced to swim to a nearby island. One crew member was too injured to swim, so Kennedy strapped a towel to him and literally towed him to the island. He did this despite an injury to his back due to the accident. Later, he was given a medal, and it helped boost his political career, eventually becoming president. I doubt, however, that Kennedy would compare himself to either Churchill or Fleming. Who would have thought that the discoverer of penicillin actually came from a poor family? President Lincoln was an American who originally came from very simple surroundings. Starting out as a woodcutter or logger, he was also self-educated due to the poor education system at the time. President Truman spent his early years selling men's suits out of the trunk of a car. No one at the time thought he would one day have his finger on the atomic bomb, ending World War II. His name was Fleming, and he was a poor Scottish farmer. One day, while trying to eke out a living for his family, he heard a cry for help coming from a nearby bog. He dropped his tools and ran to the bog. There, mired to his waist in black muck, was a terrified boy, screaming and struggling to free himself. Farmer Fleming saved the lad from what could have been a slow and terrifying death. The next day, a fancy carriage pulled up to the Scotsman's sparse surroundings. An elegantly dressed nobleman stepped out and introduced himself as the father of the boy Farmer Fleming had saved. "I want to repay you," said the nobleman. "You saved my son's life." "No, I can't accept payment for what I did," the Scottish farmer replied. Waving off the offer, at that moment the farmer's own son came to the door of the family hovel. "Is that your son?" the nobleman asked. "Yes," the farmer replied proudly. "I'll make you a deal. Let me take him and give him a good education. If the lad is anything like his father, he'll grow to a man you can be proud of." And that he did. In time. Farmer Fleming's son graduated from St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in London, and went on to become known throughout the world as the noted Sir Alexander Fleming.
the discoverer of penicillin. Years afterward, the nobleman's son was stricken with pneumonia. What saved him? It was penicillin. What was the name of the nobleman? It was Lord Randolph Churchill. And what was his son's name? It was Sir Winston Churchill. His name was Fleming, and he was a poor Scottish farmer. One day, while trying to eke out a living for his family, he heard a cry for help coming from a nearby bog. He dropped his tools and ran to the bog. There, mired to his waist in black muck, was a terrified boy, screaming and struggling to free himself. Farmer Fleming saved the lad from what could have been a slow and terrifying death. The next day, a fancy carriage pulled up to the Scotsman's sparse surroundings. An elegantly dressed nobleman stepped out and introduced himself as the father of the boy Farmer Fleming had saved. I want to repay you, said the nobleman. You saved my son's life. No, I can't accept payment for what I did, the Scottish farmer replied, waving off the offer. At that moment, the farmer's own son came to the door of the family hovel. Is that your son? The nobleman asked. Yes, the farmer replied proudly. I'll make you a deal. Let me take him and give him a good education. If the lad is anything like his father, he'll grow to a man you can be proud of. And that he did. In time, Farmer Fleming's son graduated from St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in London and went on to become known throughout the world as the noted Sir Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin. Years afterward, the nobleman's son was stricken with pneumonia. What saved him? It was penicillin. What was the name of the nobleman? It was Lord Randolph Churchill. And what was his son's name? It was Sir Winston Churchill. Okay, 好，同学们对完了答案之后，你答对几题呢？如果没有答对，没有关系，听老师解释。我们看第一句 ，His name was Fleming, and he was a poor Scottish farmer. 他的名字叫富莱明，他是谁？他是个贫穷的苏格兰农夫。One day, while trying to eke out a living for his family, he heard a cry for help coming from a nearby bog. 有一天，他在耕种的时候 ，he trying to eke out a living for his family， 他就是要去耕种的时候，为了他的家庭要出去工作的时候 ，he heard a cry for help. Cry for help 就是喊救命啊，救命啊！从哪里喊的呢？树上吗？山上吗？不是 ，coming from a nearby bog. Nearby 就是附近的一个沼泽。他一听到之后呢，就怎么样 ？He dropped his tools. 他就把他的工具一丢。He dropped his tools and ran to the bog. 就跑到沼泽那边去。结果 there 他看到什么 ？There 就是在那里。好，我们第二题的答案出来了。Mired to his waist in black muck. Was a terrified boy. 好，我们看一下第二题答案是 mired to his waist in black muck. 这个我们要一起看 black muck. 我们先解释这个哈，就是已经这个黑色的这种泥巴已经都埋到了他的腰了。Okay, was a terrified boy. 他在腰上面看到一个很害怕、很害怕的男孩。这个男孩在做什么事情？后面是用呃，现在进行式 screaming and struggling to free himself， 想要挣脱，想要从那个沼泽的那个泥巴里面逃逃出来。Screaming 就是大叫 ，struggling to free free himself 就是一直挣扎着要爬出来的。Father Fleming saved the lad for what could have been a slow and terrifying death. Okay, Farmer Fleming 这个富莱明这个农夫呢 ，saved the lad. 注意一下这个 lad， 同学们，上次老师给同学看，同学们说，老师你那个拼错了啦，这是 lady， 你少了一个 y。我说，哎、欸
多读一点书，好吗？这个 lad 是古时候就是所谓的文言文，英文也有文言文啊，哈，它用字比较雅，指的是男生、小男生。OK， save the lad from what could have been a slow and terrifying death. 这里有个句型 ，what could have been， 就是如果他没有救他，可能发生的。这是指过去可能发生的。What could have been？ 如果他没有救他，那就会是一个什么场景呢 ？Slow， 慢慢的，而且是很可怕的死亡。你知道，你掉进沼泽里，那个泥巴就这样一直淹上来。他现在已经淹到腰部了，对不对？然后再来就淹到胸部，再来就淹到你的脖子，再来就淹到你的鼻子，再来淹到眼睛，你就被活埋了。那是不是很可怕的一种死法？对不对 ？Slow and terrifying death。接下来第二天发生什么事情呢 ？The next day， 在讲故事、讲过去式的时候，同学们不要说 tomorrow。tomorrow 是你现在讲第二天，叫 tomorrow。在故事里面发生的第二天，你要叫 the next day。A fancy carriage pulled up to the Scotsman's sparse surroundings。好，第五题的答案出来了，叫 carriage 是马车。我们等一下 words in use 会解释。The next day。哇，第二天呢，一定很华丽的 ，fancy。OK， it's a fancy car， it's a fancy restaurant， it's a fancy hotel。Fancy 就是用来形容非常富丽堂皇的，富丽堂皇的马车。OK， 就停到了这个苏格兰人的家里了。Sparse surroundings 就是周围都很空旷的。那里面坐着谁呢 ？An elegantly dressed nobleman， 有一个穿着非常高贵的 ，elegantly。Dressed， 他用一个副词修饰一个形容词 dressed。OK， nobleman 就是所谓的呃有皇家血统的这个 nobleman， 就是这个贵族。哈，有一个贵族就走出来了。你光看这个马车的态势就知道，这个排场一定来头不小，对不对？他就从这个马车上 stepped out， 走了出来，他就自我介绍啦。And introduce him as the father of the boy Father Fleming had saved. OK， 他就自我介绍，介绍说他是谁，他是那个富兰明农夫救的那个男生的爸爸。OK， I want to repay you。他来做什么 ？I want to repay you。他要来报答人家的，对不对？人家救了你儿子一命，你当然第二天要赶快去报答人家啦。I want to repay you。注意，他用的是 pay， pay 的意思表示是付钱。好，所以他一定是带着。哇，五千两黄金，几千两白银，或者是钻石哈之类的金银财宝。他这里用的是 pay， 就表示这些一定是财宝或者是金钱。I want to repay you， 我要报答你，而且报答是很丰富的这种金钱。You saved my son's life. OK， 那这个农夫有没有见钱眼开啊？哇，太好了，救到一个有钱人的儿子，我这一下子发了。他有没有这样子？他没有，他救人不求回报，所以他说 no。I can't accept payment for what I did. 他是很穷很穷的农夫，家徒四壁，对不对？每天要这样子在农场工作，才勉强可以糊口。就我看到这么大大一笔赏金，或者这个酬劳，或者报酬，他居然一点都没有见钱眼开，他断然就拒绝了。他说 ，I can't accept any payment. Payment 就是指钱。我觉得救人是应该的 ，OK， 不能见死不救，所以 I can't. Accept payment for what I did," the Scottish farmer replied, waving off the offer. Waving off 就是嗯，不用不用不用不用不用，我不能收这种钱。就是 waving 就是你挥手的意思。Off 就是把这个 offer 就挥掉了。Offer 就是这个呃富富有的贵族给他的这些 offer 提出来的这个建议。他说啊，不用不用不用不用，就回绝掉了。那事情结束了吗？还没有哦。At that moment. The farmer's own son came to the door of the family hovel. 在那个时候呢，农夫的自己的儿子，哎，正好就走进家门了。Came to the door of the family hovel. Hovel 是我们第八题的答案 ，H O V E L。那 nobleman 就 asked， 就问他了 ，Is that your son？ 他说，那你儿子吗 ？Yes， the farmer replied proudly. 他显然很以他儿子为荣，对不对？哈 ，replied， 回答，很骄傲的回答 ，Yes。所以这个有钱人就说了什么话呢？好啦，你不收我的钱，那这样好了 ，I'll make you a deal. Deal 就是我们谈来谈去的一个条件嘛，还有一个交易。Let me take him and give him a good education. 
他说：“那请你让我带他走，然后给他受很好的教育。教育是无价的。那农夫显然是没有办法给孩子受很好的教育。If the lad is anything like his father, he will grow up to be a man you can be proud of。”他说：“如果这个男生啊，跟他爸爸是一样的，虎父无犬子，对不对？他将来长大之后，你一定会以他为荣。” And that he did。那事实上也真的是这样。In time。Farmer Fleming's son graduated from St Mary's Hospital Medical School in London. 他说，这个儿子啊，很成才，很争气。他最后从哪里毕业呢？他从伦敦的圣玛丽医学院毕业，那是一个很棒的医学院。那 and went on， 不是只有停在那里哦，不是医学院毕业就去当个医生就了事喽。And went on to become known throughout the world. 后来还变成举世闻名的一个谁呢？ As the noted Sir Alexander Fleming, 变成了亚历山大·富莱明爵士。这里的 Sir 不是先生 ，OK？ 那是一个呃，他已经受到官位了，有这个爵位了。The discoverer of penicillin. 他做了什么事？他发明了一呃，他发现 discover 是发现，发现什么呢 ？Penicillin. Penicillin 就是盘尼西林一种抗生素。这种抗生素救了很多人的命。Years afterward. The nobleman's son was stricken with pneumonia. 啊，几年之后呢？这个贵族的人的这个儿子，不是之前掉到沼泽那个吗？大难不死，必有后福，对不对？哎，居然又来了，他又得了什么？得了肺炎 pneumonia. What saved him? 那是什么救了他呢？肺炎在当时，跟你如果得了肺炎，就是得了死刑一样的意思。那是没有药可以医的，就一直咳，一直咳，一直咳，然后最后就死掉了。pneumonia 是很可怕的。It was penicillin. 是盘尼西林这个抗生素救了他。Now, what was the name of the nobleman? 那那个富商那个贵族到底是谁呢 ？It was Lord Randolph Churchill. 是丘吉尔大人。Lord 就是大人，就是英国都是那些呃王公贵族啦。Okay. And what was his son's name? 哇，这个儿子实在是大难不死，必有后福，常常这样被救，对不对？一下被他爸爸救，一下第二次又被他的儿子救。这个人是谁 ？It was Sir Winston Churchill. 这个人是谁？丘吉尔首相，英国名相。第二次世界大战的时候，英国名相。同学们要知道，他是大难不死的人，而且他同时被这对父子救了两次，而且是因为他爸爸这样的无私救人，才让他的儿子有。发明 penicillin 的机会，对不对？如果他爸爸当时把钱收了，我们现在大家大概都没救了，世界上也不会活下这么多人，因为都死于肺炎的。那是一个跟黑死病一样的。OK， 所以同学们有没有觉得这课的课文很感人呢？我们来听一下 culture tips。They call it the American dream, starting with practically nothing. And becoming successful. In the earliest years of U.S. history, most all Americans came from Europe and were usually poor. They also faced religious or political persecution. In America, they had the freedom to be themselves and own their homes or land. They also earned the right to be educated. The freedom existed for a better life. Still, it takes hard work and determination. That's certainly what it must have taken Fleming in order to find penicillin, and maybe it was that difficult and limited beginning, as the son of a poor farmer, that drove him forward in life to make such a huge contribution to mankind. Certainly, Churchill realized that with such a limited existence, a good education wouldn't be available. Just think what life would have been like today if a good education weren't free. Would we have access to certain medications? Would we have been able to reach out to space or to create the internet? Would there be cell phones or satellites? Where would all of us be without the help and resources of one another? This story also brings up the fact that Fleming dedicated his life to medicine, obviously dedicating himself to the helping of others. Sir Winston Churchill became famous for helping the people of Great Britain to survive World War II. He was another great person who helped inspire and, and motivate an entire nation, not to give up, but to keep fighting. And it was in this spirit 
that they were able to defeat Nazi Germany and win World War II. Of course, they did get some help from the Americans, but that's another story. And what would life be like now if Winston Churchill hadn't decided to help his fellow, fellow countrymen? Or worse yet, if there had been no Winston Churchill? Would Germany have taken over Great Britain? Can you imagine traveling to England and having to speak German? Or at the very least, would England be as wonderful and prosperous as it is now? It's doubtful. And an even better question would be, what would life be like today if Alexander Fleming hadn't survived as a young boy? People around the world probably wouldn't be as healthy and as prosperous as they are now. It's amazing what an even small act of kindness can accomplish. Okay, 又到了我们 words in use 的时间了。我们首先来看第一句。One day, while trying to eke out a living for his family, he heard a cry for help coming from a nearby bog. 这里我们看第一个字 eke, eke 就是努力工作以糊口，就是只能糊口而已。这样知道吗？不是你努力工作之后，然后享受生活，他没有办法享受生活，他就是勉强三餐温饱这样子而已，叫 eke out a living. Okay. 下一个字叫 nearby. Nearby 是附近的，就是 nearby 什么什么 nearby restaurant, nearby hotel. 那下一个字叫 bog. B o g bog 是沼泽。这个字，请同学们特别注意一下它的发音，不要念成 bog。我们请同学来念的时候，很多人看到 o 就念 bog。就像你 h o t， 你是怎么念？你会念成 hot 吗？不会嘛。所以单独一个 o 的时候会发 a 的音，所以这个字要念 b o g， 念什么 bog， 不是 bog， OK？ 就像 h o t 里面 hot， p o t 里面 pot， 你也不是念 pot， 对不对？好，所以特别注意一下这个字的发音。好，我们看下一句。He dropped his tools and ran to the bog. There, mired to his waist in black muck. Was a terrifying boy screaming and struggling to free himself? 好，第一个字 mire, mire 就是沾满污泥的意思。沾满 mire 就是本身就是你弄脏了，就叫 mire. Okay. 那污泥呢 ？Muck, m u c k. 同学们会的可能都是 dirt. Okay. 呃、uh, ，mud, m u d. 但是我们这里再多学一些 muck. Okay. 那下一个字是 terrified. Terrify 是使什么人惊吓？那在这里受到惊吓的，他用 terrified 是被惊吓的 terrified boy. Okay, 我们接下来看下一句。The next day, a fancy carriage pulled up to the Scotsman's sparse surroundings. 这里的字第一个叫 carriage. Carriage 就是马车。你 car 就是汽车 ，OK？ 你不用说 horse carriage， 因为 carriage 就是用马来拉的，叫 carriage。OK？ 那你不会说这个 engine carriage。所以马车这个字本身 by definition 它就是由马来拉的一种车。OK？ 那另外一个 sparse，sparse sparse 是很空旷的 ，sparse 呃、uh, surroundings，surroundings 是你周围的环境，叫 surroundings。下一个。An elegantly dressed nobleman stepped out and introduced himself as the father of the boy Farmer Fleming has saved. 这里一个字是副词 ，elegantly。这个字同学们一定学过 ，elegant. Oh, she's an elegant lady. Okay, 像 Grace Kelly is an elegant lady. Elegant 就是很优雅的，她是一个很优雅的女士。And she dressed up. Elegantly. 好，那在这里是当副词。那老师以前有说过，我们背一个单字要成群的，他的家族你都要认识。他爸爸是谁？妈妈是谁？阿公是谁？阿妈是谁？对不对？
我们现在学了 elegantly， 你就知道了。把 ly 拿掉，就是 elegant， 就是形容词。那如果说 elegance， she walked with elegance， 她走路很优雅。除了用 elegantly 之外呢，我们也可以说 with elegance， e l e g a n c e， 就是优雅的名词。好，我们看下一句。At that moment, the farmer's own son came to the door of the family hovel. Hovel 这个字叫陋室，就是很简陋的。我们这一课学到的都是描述那种困境啊，几呃，就是三餐只求温饱啊，然后住的什么地方啊，对不对？那在这里陋室，不是那个有写一个陋室名吗？对不对？山不在高，有仙则灵，对不对？陋室 Hovel。好，那下一个 ，Sir Alexander Fleming was the discoverer of penicillin. Okay. Sir Alexander， 下次看到这个 Sir 就知道一定是英国人，因为就英国人才会这样封官加爵哈。这个亚历山大·弗莱明 was the discoverer of penicillin。penicillin 这个字就是盘尼西林，是什么呢？它是一种药，它是一种抗生素。OK， 可以治很多呃，在早期来讲都是不治之症的一种一些病哈。这是很大很大的贡献。penicillin。好，下一个。Years afterward, the nobleman's son was stricken with pneumonia. 特别注意一下这个 stricken， 这个字是从 strike 来的，但是这里要念 stricken， 请同学们特别注意一下发音。还有 pneumonia 的发音也要特别注意一下，它 p 在前面是不发音的。英文有很多这样的字，好像 psychology, p s y c h o l o g y, psychology 心理学，它前面有个 p， 但是它也不发音。OK， 那这里也是一样 ，pneumonia， 你那个 P 不要看，你就不会被这个搞混了。哎，怎么发音呢？两个又 P 又 N， 哈，你就不要发音就好了，它就叫 pneumonia。同学们只要看到 I A 结尾的英文字，就表示是一种病，比方说 mania 就是疯子 ，OK， mania 什么什么呀 ，phobia 就是一种恐惧症，那 pneumonia 就是肺炎。好，这样知道吗？所以只要看到 I A 结尾的。都是什么？都是病啦。所以下次同学们如果去考英检的时候，记得只要看到有 I A I A 什么 I A， 你就算不认识它，但是它一定不会是好字。那特别注意一下，这个字 N E U 在一起发 U， 所以它是 pneumonia。这个字的发音很多同学都不会念哈，这是一个很重要的字，因为很多人都会感冒，一感冒就一直咳嗽。如果当你咳很久的时候，医生就会跟你说 ：“Hey, you have a pneumonia。”这个字一定要听懂哦。万一你到国外去，万一淋到雨啦、发烧啦，或者不小心感冒，医生跟你说你是 pneumonia 的时候，你至少要听懂你是什么病，这是很重要的。这样清楚吗？好，接下来我们要看 B English。B English. He missed the bull's eye. A. 他搞不清楚重点。B. 他很想念牛的眼睛。好，今天 B English 题目是 He missed the bull's eye. A. 他搞不清楚重点。B. 他很想念牛的眼睛。OK， 这里的中文都是我们请同学们翻译的时候翻出来的。那居然有同学选了 B， 因为 miss。I miss you， 就是我很想念你。但是重点不是在这里，这里不是想念，是错过了。He missed the bull's eye。Bull's eye 表示是重点 ，miss 就是错过重点，也就是 A 他搞不清楚重点。You are missing the bull's eye。下次有人呢没搞清楚重点，你可以这样告诉他 ：Hey， you have missed the bull's eye。All right。好看了我们这一课，同学们知道谁是 Alexander Fleming 了吗？在今天得了 pneumonia 肺炎 ，no big deal， 因为我们有抗生素。这抗生素就是 Alexander Fleming 所发现的，它对人类的贡献非常的大。谢谢各位同学收看我们今天的节目，我是梁彩玲，祝福大家英检一定零。